Geo Mike is with us here today. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. How about you today? Yeah, I'm doing amazing today, I think. Now, you've got a new song out called Whimsical at the right. moment, and you've also got, I'm going to try to pronounce this, Kaprishkos. That sounds kind of like a Russian version of it, but it's uh. Caprichosa. It's really Caprichosa or Caprichoso, but the X is more genderless. Uh. So that's how I pronounce it. So that's the Spanish version and remix of Whimsical because I, yeah. I speak Spanish and that's my heritage as well. Mm. So what are those songs about then? Well, the songs are really about finding and accepting who I am. Yeah, I had a really interesting last two years, mm. besides with COVID, personally, and I was engaged, and that didn't work out. I'm, I'm engaged again, but this time, this time, Toby, I'm hoping it works out. It yeah. will work. Fingers crossed. Yeah, right. And I came to this point where I need to needed to for my own mental health and well being to accept myself. Otherwise, I wasn't going to grow. And I do this so much as a teacher. I motivate. I say, do, you know, do your best and focus on your strengths. But I had to take my own advice for yeah, once. Yeah, absolutely. So how long did it take you to come up with the song? So it was a process, this whole idea, even of music. Yeah. I always, with my best friend, Winnie, she directed my lyric video for Whimsical. She's an art teacher. We've been best friends since grade nine or we call I know you call it grade nine we call it freshman year in yeah. high school and we've always talked about doing music together and we had this time with the lockdown I was still teaching but online and I said to myself when am I going to have this time yeah. so I found a system online and I have ADHD or ADD so noises come to me very easily so what I do is I line up all the noises that I like and see if they go and then I play around with them and I look for patterns it's like how I teach yeah. and the first song was whimsical and the second one was mind trap which then became abyss so they all started instrumental so the night I was supposed to get married I had a concert I said I don't want to be alone and I'm a ham I love the attention I mean look at me this is by the way Toby this is called American Football Couture and Ooh. it's five dollars because I'm on a teacher's budget and you, you don't have to yeah. Spend a lot of money to look good. Just, you know, just saying. And um, I decided to go for it. So it started with that. And I did um, with my parents. So long story short, I had to move out of my house. I was living with my fiance, ex-fiance, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Him. <laughs> and I was with my best friends for like two weeks. And then I was at my parents. So we started to do karaoke. So my voice is getting better and we were having fun with it. So my dad's right now learning guitar. My stepmom um, plays the piano. And she's taking singing lessons. And my um, my step cousin just moved in downstairs. She is a vocalist and she was in Happy Feet. She did the song for Happy Feet. So it's like wow. all this music is coming out like right now. Yeah. So um, I went with it. And then in December, January, I decided, OK, I'm ready. Yeah. And I sang over it in one shot, and that was the song. Mm -hmm. And I played around with it. So it's interesting. Toby, do you write music? No, not at all. No? Okay. Do you make beats? No. What do you do? No, I'm joking. You, yeah. uh, you um, do interviews, which is fabulous. Um, uh, so there's like two ways I do it. Um, mm -hmm. Two of the songs I wrote, and then the other ones, I play the beats and I sing over it. And... Um, that's what Whimsical and Abyss, which is coming up, the instrumental is coming up Friday, and then I'm releasing it four weeks later. Um, and Abyss is about my mental health and how I go back and forth with creativity and those high points and then the low points of feeling, feeling vulnerable, but also getting in that dark state I was when I was a kid or when I was younger and having those emotions control me and that's that's what abyss is about is you know having that balance and like will i get out of that so it's a journey so yeah, absolutely is this your first musical project or have you done all sorts of stuff before i mean it's my first time doing any of this so yeah i i always followed charts i love I, it, I, it's odd. I hate math, bad math, bad teacher here, but I told my kids, I failed like math twice um, in university. 
But now how I teach math is very visual because I'm a visual person. Like we incorporate music in our math lessons. We incorporate art and it makes more sense. Because some of these things, I'm like, I don't care. There's a calculator to do it. Yeah. But when I explain it and show it, it's like, wow, it's, it's much more exciting. So slowly, like, I guess I was doing it that way because I was a kindergarten teacher. So I was always singing and dancing. Yeah. So, and I'm a shows person, you know, I, I'm a, I'm of Sicilian and, you know, Mediterranean descent. So we like music. We're loud. We're, you know, we're, we we're very warm people usually. So yeah. music's very big on and eating. It's a big part of our life. Yeah. And Toby, I, if I go off course, I have someone in my class. I said this in an interview. I said, just, you know, just tell me, you know, stay on topic. I'm really not offended. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, anyway, so that it really started with that. And then it just, moved on in steps like what i said instrumental and yeah. now the album's done so i have seven songs it's an a it's a it's a album according to spotify and apple music it's under 30 minutes but it's seven tracks you know mm. the rules yeah. and um it's done but because it's a singles market i'm releasing it every four to six weeks yeah absolutely and you mentioned being a teacher do you kind of worry about if you become a very well-known musician and then you have pupils that are like that's my teacher and they'll know you outside of your job so this year they were in my house with virtual learning i was nervous it was a totally different atmosphere yeah and being a teacher is an amazing thing but we're a public figure so i have no explicit language yeah. i can be entertaining and i can be provocative and i can be in a certain way pushing boundaries but what i kind of like about being a teacher is that i have that rounding me i have that accountability um i don't i have very strong ethics and morals in the sense of I don't want to be associated with music that degrades people or does that. And I actually talked to my promoter and got myself off a playlist because I didn't agree with the songs. Yeah. So I kind of think that works as a benefit. But yes, as I do need to think of that. But I went to school for teach uh, for other things, science, and then t teaching happened. Then I went to school for administration, director, principal. Yeah. And this year I was thinking, well, what a great way to motivate is through music. Mm, yeah, so yeah. I think I can do both. I am doing both and I'm excited. And you know what, Toby? Day by day, that's all I say. Yeah, absolutely. And your name, Geo Mike, is because you were a geography B in middle school. Yeah. So, yeah. so wait, we had this, I was talking to um, Logan from New Zealand yeah. And do you call it primer, primer, primer? Primary school. Primary. Okay. And then it's grade one. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. It kind of differs in different parts of the country, which is even more confusing. Uh -oh. We have primary okay. school and secondary school, which is more commonly just known as high school. Oh, but what do you call kindergarten? That's nursery, actually. See, that's okay. But that's not like really school. That's just like drawing pictures and stuff. Basically oh God, child totally... care, to be honest. Oh, so what I taught in the States is kindergarten. They're five turning six. Mike, mm. we're oh. reading, we're doing. Um, actually, I play this um, Geraldine the Giraffe. It's from Britain and they're big, she teaches digraphs. So I expose my children to different types of English too, uh. like Australian, British, British, New Zealand, South African, because uh, and even American. I have a yeah. very strong New Jersey, New York accent. And we, <laughs> we did a map of... Um, fizzies you know soda yeah. i call it that so in the states we parts of the states call fizzies or soda pop mm. or coke so yeah. we go over those dialects and the difference in language and culture so they understand that there's different ways of saying mm. things and communicating yeah but the geo back to that toby yeah. is yeah. geography so i was in the gob and i do teach geography I teach everything in uh, primary school and I decided to put that in there because it was my screen on Instagram. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I believe in using your strengths and what you have. And I love geography. So wait, where's your family from? In, in are you from England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland? Scotland. Because my Isle of Skye, I, I'm the queen. My heritage. So my, my mom's side, um, part of it is Isle of Skye. So I don't know, we're in Scotland. Oh, I'm not that far up north, but I'm kind of halfway between Glasgow and Edinburgh. And then oh. the Isle of Skye is like a little bit northwest. Northwest. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I want to get to Scotland. I must say, yeah. it's funny because my, my dad's side is fully 
Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. And my mom's is Mediterranean and that Scottish side. And even though they might be culturally like not near each other, Scottish people have such a sense of humor Mm -hmm. and we love to laugh at ourselves. And it it actually goes very along with Italian in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Um, And we like to we like to party hardy. So uh, (laughs) I'm I'm really I've been to Dublin in um, Ireland because I have some we went to Scotland to Cork and then to Nova Scotia and then to the States on that side. So I've been to Ireland, but I really want to get to Scotland. Do you have to tell me where where is the quintessential place? Where's the Toby's? Where should I visit? Tell me, Toby. I don't really know. I don't, oh, I don't uh, really know where people want to go. Like, well, you know. like I like to meet people. I like good food. I like to yeah. socialize. I suppose probably just Edinburgh, probably. And I know that probably sounds really obvious, but not not Glasgow. I kind of like the no edginess. Yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind being yeah. on the edge. You know, Glasgow if you want to get stabbed. Edinburgh if you want the history and stuff. I suppose I'd take the stabbing. <laughs> oh yeah, any day of the week. You know what? I mean, I love castles, but like. Mm. I, I don't watch any of the Downton Abbey, all that. Oh, yeah. Not that I don't agree with it. It's just like, mm-hmm. all right, like, it's fine. I mean, I do want to go to Isle of Skye oh, yeah. um, and see where my family's from. But I I do love, as I get older, my type of traveling changed. So uh, thank God. I was in Madrid right before the lockdown in yeah. February. And this is where I got a lot of my fashion. Oh, I went <laughs> eight. I loved uh, sh- the shoes in Madrid, by the way. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And... I was up to like seven in the morning. Wow. I went for three days, Toby. That's what kind of, I was like, <laughs> typical American. Let me go. And wow, I could do it on one day off. My principal's like, you're crazy. I said, I know, but you know, she accepts me. Thank God. Mm. And um, it was a blast. But I, I like the, as I get older, you know, I, I look at the touristy stuff. Like we went to, to get, you know, the um, chocolate, the dipping in the chocolate and, uh, oh, yeah. you know, Plaza de Sol, all that. But then I, I like the other neighborhoods where I can actually meet locals and speak Spanish. And my and it's interesting, you speak French, correct? A tiny bit, like how to order a drink and stuff. We're, so <laughs> I'm teaching my kids and I'm butchering it, French. So yeah. where I work is mostly Spanish speaking, right? So uh, obviously they teach me more Spanish sometimes too, but I know a little Italian, I know some Spanish and obviously English. So our new thing is we're learning French. So I have a lot of um, Arab population too. So we sometimes learn Arab. Um, Arabic, but in French, I was teaching them the word cat and my barber's from Algeria and I didn't put the, the in front of it. And it changes the whole connotation of the word. I'm like, Oh my. So, uh, Oh, so I was like, Oh no. So I have to tell the kids and I want to say, Oh, let's put lay in front of it. So, um, yeah, French, French is, um, a language I've been to Paris and I've been to Cali, but, um, I do want to explore more of France. Have you been to yeah. France? Oh, yes. Yeah, been quite a few times. Yeah. Oh. Do you ever watch the show on BBC? It's called Ex- Escape to the Continent. Oh. It's yeah. older. I don't it's... know. I've heard of Escape to the Country. Okay. So it's that version, but it's like they go to um, like France, Italy, Cyprus. Oh. So I've learned so much through that. Uh, I love those shows where I can yeah. see like go and, you know, that so france is somewhere um i would love to go besides paris and germany Mm -hmm. i've been to germany twice at the airports but um i haven't been so how's the situation in your country for covid well we are still doing bad i think we're getting better because we're seem to be opening stuff up again and we're vaccinating a lot of people did you get your jab i haven't had mine yet because i'll probably be like the last person but most people have been vaccinated now which is good and then we're on the way out and then i guess who knows maybe it'll all go south again i I know um so i was reading so again i read bbc so yeah i was reading that one of the higher members i forgot what their exact role in the government said it doesn't look like the uk is going to open up this summer Mm. because the uk has been doing and the states and israel and um Dubai, um, United Arab Emirates really got the jabs and the vaccines in. Yeah. 
Yeah. But um, how do you feel about that? Were you like itching to travel? Not really abroad. Like I'd prefer to not be able to travel abroad and have everything open up in the country, like cinemas and theatres and restaurants and stuff, than okay. being able to go abroad but everything is shut here. Because then you only really go abroad once or twice a year, so it's not worth giving up everything at home to just and it's go on holiday. Businesses, okay. Yeah, that's that's interesting. But then I suppose there's businesses in like Spain that are struggling because they don't have our tourism. I suppose. <laughs> Now, have you been to Bennett Benador? No, but I've seen the TV show we have here. <laughs> it's, it's a, did you ever hear Jersey Shore? Oh yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. All right. So I'm from New Jersey, so people think it's like Jersey Shore, like it's like Benador. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's what I was watching. It's like, oh, I was like, hey, you know, people want the sun good for them, but I just like to see the different um different cultures. Like, I do want to go to Manchester. Oh, I've been to London right. twice. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I stayed in Camden and I stayed in, um, is it St. Regent's Park? Oh, yeah. St. Russell Square. There you go. Uh, I, I stayed over there, but I do want to go to Manchester um, and Liverpool and the lakes. Is that where you are up there? Or are you Further are you in... north than that in Scotland. But oh, that's there. right. Okay. Sorry. I now remember between Edinburgh and Glasgow. Okay. Of course. Yes. Now you've also got a new song coming out shortly called Abyss. So Correct. tell us about that song. What's the idea behind that? Is it similar? So what I mentioned before with Abyss, it's my struggles with, or not even, I guess struggles, or just me going through the process of those highs and lows. Yeah. So this is the hard thing, Toby. Like when I was, when I make music, I, the, the genre classification, I understand yeah. needs to be done, but I can actually, it's coming out the instrumental, but I'm going to, do you care if I play a clip? Because uh, it's coming, is that a, cool? Yes. You tell me, I, I on this genre stuff, yeah. whimsical is kind of like, trip hoppy downbeat and it was interesting because the interview at yesterday because i love radiohead i love alternative rock i'm not big in and fleetwood mac i like that too but i kind of sing it monotone-esque and the beats is kind of trip hoppy but when i was making it, i really wasn't thinking of that but kind of makes sense so this song is a continuation of that trip hop chill vibe sound but also kind of bringing in that lo-fi sound as well, but piano and it, it's a polarizing song, but my America, like, so my best friends I've been sampling and they love this song, um, but some of my European promoters are not so big on it. So it's interesting to see the differences in geography. So this is it if, and I might cut the beginning, I don't know, we'll see. The mind. Sun is shining, sun is shining, sun is shining, I feel good. Let the red haze, let the red haze, let them bring me And then so the instrumentals coming, you know, because everything's staggered. I'm pitching this to Spotify. Yeah, let's see if they take it. You get an eye roll that. Um, gosh, I'm going to be sued. Um, um, so I'm doing what I decided because I have Whimsical Caprichosa. I'm going to release this instrumental and I have the video coming out on my YouTube. And I filmed my fire pit and it's like uh, it's in like the fire pit and it's in a whirl and Ooh. in an abyss. So I wanted people to hear the beats before and then the, the lyrics. So you tell yeah. me, what do you think? I guess it's kind of hip hop, I suppose. I never thought it would be hip hop, but hmm. do you see how it's like kind of like um, chill hop? Did you ever hear that? Or like kind of yeah. lo-fi, I mean, all the lemonade rap. I, I'm looking at this, you're like a grandfather. I'm like, the hell is lemonade rap? <laughs> um, what is like, did you ever hear that? Like if yeah. you look, if you have to promote yourself, right? And this is what I was getting at. I'm not into buying streams. OK, hmm. I'm very proud that I started January 31st and now I have 260 followers on Spotify and I have almost 80 followers on my YouTube channel. Hmm. I want followers, yeah. but you do need to promote with curators and you do need to get your songs on playlists. So there's a difference between working with a promoter and just saying, oh, I want 100,000 streams. So yeah. I'm lucky that I have a promoter that actually does, you know, helps me with the genres or says, you know, works with me and the, the playlist um, curators, because that's how you get your music out. Otherwise, 
I would have like 20 fans. Yeah, exactly. So that is coming up though, Toby. So I, 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 I see you have art in the background and yeah. what do you have kids? No, no. You like Muppets? It's very cute. Can I yeah. see it? It's very like popping. I like it. I guess I can adjust my webcam. Yeah. Oh, that's a Muppet. Muppets. Yeah. Wait, I can do Kermit the Frog. You ready? Okay, <clears throat> let's hear it. Kermit the Frog here. Oh, that's good. Did you do voiceover? Is that correct? Sometimes, yes. Like, how did you, how did you get into that? I always, because I like voices, because I, I, like noises. Like, how did you get into that? I don't really know. I guess... <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember how we got into anything. I guess it's kind of like because I've always done kind of radio stuff. It's easy to end up doing that, I suppose. Okay, so how did you, like, so I follow charts. Yeah. So, like, are you on terrestrial radio, satellite, a mixture? It's online radio. Shout, I saw that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So awesome. Mm. So I, you know, and that's something I, I need to now adventure into getting my music onto radio and the promotion mm. again. Yeah. It's very interesting. Um, you know, I'm not going to be on heart for BBC one or BBC two. Yeah. You know, that was a big, I'm a big Madonna fan and that was a big controversy. They won't play her stuff on BBC one anymore because oh, she's no. too old. Yeah, that's true. And, but that's terrible. I mean, Toby, how old do I look? I don't know. I'm not even going to try. Oh, you should. I mean, just take a guess if you had a guess. 27. Good job. I'm 35. <laughs> so I, I, that's old for the music industry. So mm. Part of it is I, I'm. Uh, what is motivating me is that I'm not. I'm not younger, yeah. and it's weird because when I hit my thirties, I mean, I felt alienated because of my sexuality. But this is the first time I felt alienated by the music industry, where it was like they weren't promoting to thirties. At least the demographic in the United States. Yeah, it, it's very different. Um, the UK is much more accepting of older artists. Like Madonna's radio airplay went much further in the UK than it did in the States, maybe wow. by 10 years. Even Kylie, I love Kylie Minogue. She had a massive album out. Do you know her album? Well, I know many of her albums. Okay. <laughs> she, she did Disco, which is fabulous. Oh, and then no, that no, got no. me watching Lorraine. That's my mother's name. So do you do you know Lorraine, the show? Yes. All right. So is she Scottish or Irish? Scottish. Oh, I love, I'm gonna get on her show. So <laughs> I, I like, she has my mom's name. And I was like, I like her. She seems so sweet. So it got me watching Lorraine. So it kind of, that's how this has been going. So I was so happy to see you're from um, the UK. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's a, a market that I really want to explore. And um, the, the musical talent from the UK, it's, and the diversity is very similar to the States. Yeah. There's such great, great music. Um, you have traditional music, but then also music from the areas that were colonized and mm. all that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if we're interested in checking out your music, where are we able to find it everywhere? Everywhere, actually. Um, <laughs> how about that as an answer? Mm. So I'm on Spotify. I'm on Apple. I'm on Deezer. Is that how you say? We don't use Deezer in the States that no. much. I don't think anybody really uses it here either. I think Eastern they... Europe does. Ah. Eastern Europe, like Serbia. I'm, I'm obsessed with Albania. So I did my heritage. I'm from Albania, too. And I... I don't know. ADD. Let me get back on track, Toby. And then I have a YouTube channel. Everything's G E O M I K E 122. 122 is my birthday, but I'm also spiritual. And that is, um, I'm a master number. So, you know, just even to think more highly of myself, you know? <laughs> so you can find my music there and subscribe if you like it. And really, Toby, like, I'm enjoying this. Mm. I I'm a blabbermouth. I literally, when the kids don't listen to me, I talk to the wall in school. Wow. So, this is what I'm doing the music and music videos for because I filmed too. I filmed a music video for Whimsical and I'm wearing this, by the way. Wow. Yeah. Um, because the video goes from being an idea of me being an American football player to me being me. That's yeah. the idea of the video. And Abyss, my best friend, is dancing ballet because it kind of goes with that. And my best friend, Winnie, who's the art teacher, um, produced both videos. So it's very organic in that. So I hope we can work together again and grow from there. And I really want to motivate people and see that someone of someone relates to me or not. They just get motivated and created by my music and that we grow together because I think in the last couple of years, I mean, I know uh, in the States politically and in the UK and mm -hmm. Italy, like we've gone through a conservative time, which, you know, everything ebbs and flows. 
And we've, especially in the States, we've gone through, uh, we've been going through or seeing the, the, the relations that people have with each other. And if you want to discuss that, I'm totally fine with race relations. And yeah. I, it's a big part of why I decided just how we treat each other. But also I'm privileged with my skin color. I'm privileged with my education background. And I want to use that privilege to help. Um, uh, you know, I can probably do another way and get quick. You know, I could have paid $40,000 to get a, a post Malone package by a promoter. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I want to do it in a, in a way where I grow and I can also self-reflect and see if, if I'm motivating the correct way or see how I feel at that moment. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show today. And and thank you to um thank you to all my fans and future fans. And I just want to leave it Toby with the question what makes you whimsical? Just think about that. <laughs>